There was this one person, he was positive. But it's like he was going crazy. He stopped like shaving his face or cutting his hair and you know walking on the street and it was someone I knew and and I went and I was there talking to him and I'm saying to him that um, I realized that you stopped cutting your hair and shaving your face and stuff like that and he said to me you know my life is over and I'm saying why and he said me catch big A because that's what they call it and I'm like your life is not over because you have HIV or AIDS he said, why you say that? I said, okay, there's this organization. There are persons that can counsel you and help you. And he said, really? And I'm not going to tell everybody my business. I'm like, no. They do confidential counseling and um, taking him to the organization and him receiving counseling. The person is now working and having a full life like anybody else. Peer outreach programs have several advantages. Firstly, the, the fact is we think it is best to reach the people is to pull people who belong to those demographics. When they step out, it's much more easier for them to influence their peers. Um, so definitely in terms of the outreach, it's an effective method, much, much, much more effective than um, strangers going out here. I'm still a youth person and I'm more likely to take a message from someone in my age group, someone in my same like like things you know so um monkey see monkey do so if i see my peer my friend doing something and it's a positive thing or a negative i'll probably try it because my friend my peer is doing it so at the red cross we believe that peer education is one of the fundamental things one of the fundamental strategies in changing behavior so the, the peer educator has to understand the importance of the program and the importance that he or she fulfills in that program so it cannot be looked at as just a means of, of economic support. There has to be a greater feeling, a greater calling for anybody involved in the HIV industry and worse peer education because that, those are, you know, my executive director calls it, the foot soldiers of the organization. So the long and short of it is saving lives and those lives that can be extended, extending those lives. So it's all about peace. The mere fact that most peer educators in Jamaica is something really is voluntary because there isn't much funding where the government is concerned to, to back, back it up. So it's mostly something that a person has to be a doctor really has to have a passion for it to actually do it. So you know people are still going to want to live. Money has to come in place. So that's where pressure comes. A lot of our, our, our sex workers, they are from the lower strata of society. Um, so they, they, their, their mother, their father, or the mother alone had to struggle with them or has passed on. And so they have to find, find for themselves. And um, at an early age, they, they, they are introduced into doing sex work as a means of survival. Well, for me, the main thing was, was need because um, my mother became ill and when I was in fourth grade, that's when I, I stopped, so I didn't have to finish fifth grade. So um, that was the, the main motivation for me. There were needs to be met and, you know, um, this guy decided to help me and that was where I started at about age 17. I grew up basically, well, kind of like on the streets and I was a dancer, an exotic dancer. And I, I used to talk to people and I used to go to Jamaica Eat Support for Life and I used to get condoms. So I used to go and I used to relay the information that I get back to the girls at the club and give them condoms. After being introduced to the organization, I started learning of HIV and AIDS. Um, and the passion that I had for, I still have, for, for humanity propelled me into wanting to do work in the in the field. The reason why I really came here was having friends 
tell me that they're HIV positive and not really knowing how to deal with it. I had a relative or someone close to me that was ill with HIV. So I'm saying maybe if she or he had more information on what was going on, then maybe they could have protected themselves better. So that is the reason why I chose this lineup to be a peer educator. I don't think at the time when I was working, I had much of a self-esteem and by going to the workshops that Jazz had, I have built up my self-esteem and they has empowered me and I know more about safe sex, HIV, STIs. So it, it has motiv motivated me to leave and start volunteering at Jazz before I leave and then there was position open for PDs and I had applied and I in 2011, when I worked on, on a project with sex workers, um, it proved to me that there, there are avenues in which the, the, the Ministry of Health or other health care um, providers will never ever be able to get into unless they use persons who are in the field, in the communities, on the ground, grassroots people to do the work. Peer educators reach the community on a one-on-one -on -one basis. If I walk up to somebody and I'm able to talk to them for 30 minutes, an hour, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, allowing them to feel my energy and to trust me, I can get so much more than a psychiatrist or a psychologist would because by virtue of being a psychiatrist or a psychologist, the person is more closed off. But I am just like you. There's nothing special about me. I have no, no titles behind my name that would make you feel like, you know, I should act a particular way or I should emote this or I should keep that. So just being out there and going, you know, to understand, you know, and you, know, you use language, child and all of that. They see that you know the language, they relax and the one-on-one -on -one is where you get them. That's what peer education is. It's not about the specialized level of knowledge. But it's just that you want persons want to know that yes, there is someone that I can trust. So the educators first build that trust with any one of the target group. And from you build that trust with that target group, get them at a comfortable level that yes, somebody cares, somebody I can trust, I can speak with about my problem. Because most times they don't want to hear about the scientific part of it. They just want a face-to-face -face connection with you that yes, I can talk with you and you understand their problem because you are going, you have passed through either the same problem or you have some concept or some idea about what they are going through. Well, being a dancer, my experiences have helped me a lot with being becoming a peer educator because as some people say, I've been there, I've done that. I know what it's like, you know, to be abused for people to think that you don't exist, you don't have feelings, you know, to be in the minority, I know what it's like. For people to look down on me, to walk into places trying to get a loan and when they ask you what kind of job you do and you say you're a dancer, they refuse you. I know what it's like, I know how it feels, I know how I want to be treated then. So I can empathize with sex workers and how they feel. Um, one of the things that I always, always, always say um, that, that is, is, is one of the failure to, to our response to the communities that we serve is that we see them as a target, we see them as a number to reach um, versus seeing them as humans and if you, see, if you see someone as a human being and then you deal with them as a human being and that will take into consideration everything that affects the, the individual because frankly it's not just HIV that affects a person and our response going out there is to respond to just the HIV component that, affect, that may affect the, the individual versus the underlying factors that creates a bigger a bigger barrier a bigger a bigger avenue to, to access to becoming infected with HIV. Some of the successes that I've had is that persons are now coming in and accessing care such as doing their HIV testing, getting additional counseling, 
we find persons who were on the brink of committing suicide, coming in and seeking for more help, and uh, preferring enough to better themselves and want, even want to go back to school to further their education. I have seen where um, peers are now more educated and, and, and issues concerning their sexuality, their sexuality and a whole, they better understand themselves. There were those who, because of, of the pressure that was put on them by the society, who did not accept um, who they are, any at all. Now we have seen, we have seen where you know they have come to, to, to actually accept who they are and to claim that okay, this is who I am, and it's not just a thing that I have taken on to myself. This is me, so I have to you know be who I am and live my life. Doing this, I hope to make a difference, you know, by impacting some of my knowledge on other sex workers, so that I can um, empower them, you know. Not to leave the trade because some sex workers don't want to leave sex work. That's what they want to do. But I mean to become a stronger person in being a sex worker, you know? I mean, you can stand up for your rights and you can say, listen, I don't want that. This is what I want. This is me. To me, the ultimate best result of the work that I'm doing and that I'm continuing to do extends far beyond simply getting someone to remember to use a condom before they have sex. To me, it's it's throwing away a lot of the biases that we have against people and understanding that we're all diverse creatures on this planet and that we need to be respectful of that diversity. To be able to have people go out and simply walk and hold hands without somebody wanting to throw a stone at them or something like that. That would be the ultimate. In this work, working for somebody, working at a brothel, working in the streets, working anywhere you work as a sex worker, right? People come, people tend to come and take step up you, treat you any way they want to, and they expect you to do suck it up because you're nobody or a dog. But I mean, I've never seen a dog walk on two legs. My plan for the future is to see it especially the target group that we work with here in Jamaica becomes more solid, able to access healthcare, education and feel free to go anywhere and just enjoy themselves. And for me, I set my own self is to just to go through my work and to be a leader for the community. I would still like to, you know, if it's even on the side, be a peer educator still I would like to you know get as much information as possible that there is so that by that time you know my work can even be much much more effective and you know more lives being touched. I want to see more of my peers you know have been access to, 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 to whatever services that there is to offer to them. I hope by 2015 you know there will come the laws will come to realize that I mean you say Right? You have a constitutional law that says that you have a right, you have rights as human beings, but yet still you don't treat people like human beings. So I hope by then they will realize and make some amendments in the laws. For me, on a personal level, I let's say I get a high from helping people. It's just in me to help others and then know where this is concerned. I just like to know that people are well informed about themselves and not making certain mistakes that, that are out there that can be avoided. So I for me on a personal level it's just my passion to help others. I think whether or not I'm still attached to this program, I still see myself um, being able to carry on a lot of this information as far as my friends are concerned or people I will meet you know, when we're in certain kinds of discussions because a lot of times even when I'm not doing an intervention or speaking to someone specifically about um, the mega support, I still find myself talking about a lot of things that we learn at the workshops or even dealing with a lot of people on the road as clients. Ultimately what this has done is teach me more about myself so that's my greatest reward. I now understand myself, my sexuality, everything that surrounds me as a result of being associated with peer education.
where do I see myself in the future? In the, in the very near future, um, accomplishing my first degree in social work. And in the mid future, probably starting my own, my own NGO, my own organization. And in the far future, who knows, 